Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Cosmos with Cosmos. I'm Brandon. I'm Liz. And I'm Mike. And today we're talking about the Big Bang. How big of a bang was it? Uh, is it really big, big bang? bang? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it formed the whole universe, so... So, so I've already been thinking about this for a few days now, reading into it more, and I just get confused because these numbers don't mean things. When you get that small and then that large within like half a second later, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, well, it's so true. We'll get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that. <laughs> uh, but first, we got to talk about what we're drinking. Uh, so uh, Liz, what are you drinking? Uh, I <laughs> am drinking a cosmic Smoothie. Cosmic smoothie. Uh, yes, it What's has it? Uh, strawberries and uh, bananas and blueberries and chocolate protein powder and some ground flaxseed and milk and strawberry green yo- yogurt and no alcohol. No alcohol. No. Wait a minute. No alcohol. No alcohol. Oh, why is that? Because I'm recovering <laughs> from fun last night. A lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol last night. Uh, Speaking of smoothies, I'm drinking white dielectric material, (laughs) more commonly referred to as bird shit. Uh, But I'm actually drinking bird shit, just in case anyone was um, worried about that. It's false advertising. It's also a smoothie, but there's Malibu rum in it, so it's uh, delightful. The The coconut rum? Coconut rum, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. It it, it tastes like summer and sunscreen. Summer and sunscreen. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, okay, I don't know like about the sunscreen it. part. Well, it, it smells so much like sunscreen and the beach and sand. Uh, this is a paid advertisement for Malibu right now. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to feel like you're living on the beach, get yourself a Malibu rum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Malibu sent us money. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Mike? Um, I have rambling about the universe, uh, mm-hmm. an homage to um, Harlow Shapley, even though he was wrong. <laughs> um, but basically, it has um, Malibu coconut rum, Malibu mango rum, Ooh. blood orange vodka, hey. triple sec. Holy shit balls. Wow. This is my Alabama slammer. Um, and it um, has Caribbean sunset. I had to get a big mug. <laughs> Damn. Holy you got, fuck. Like, it's just like all the juice liqueurs in one. Yeah. You're gonna, delicious tropical universe drink. You're going to be singing Journey at You've the end got the whole day. universe of liquors in there. Hey, look at you. Hey, I was, I was singing Black Flag last night. <laughs> more like yelling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now. now, feel free to uh, give us a follow on Twitter, at Drinking Cosmos, Instagram, Cosmos with Cosmos. You know, subscribe to the Apples, the YouTubes, the all the good stuff. All right, so to get through the episode, we have some rules, of course. Um, the rules being, if a puppy barks, take yourself a drink. Uh, we got the Amazon package earlier today, so we're set. We're good to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, we'll still get some shenanigans with dogs. Um, any Star Wars reference, take yourself a drink. And, of course, any Lord of the Rings reference, take a drink. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so I think we're ready to jump into the Big Bang. Let's get banging. Let's get banging. What what did we what should we first talk about about the Big Bang? Like, where did we begin? The beginning, or start uh, now and uh, trace our way back? No, I think we, we. Well, I guess it doesn't much matter, but um, so we just start at the beginning. Okay. okay. I guess really and truly, really we should start with the question: of What is the Big Bang? Yeah, what is I the Big Bang? I guess that's a good point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, instead of just kind of jumping into it, and so, I mean, the Big Bang really is just the prevailing. Scientific theory. I'm going to use. I'm using theory correctly here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, for the creation of the universe. So how the universe started, how it has evolved over the past 13.8 billion years, and um, I use I use uh, the word theory because it has been ha- it has had a lot of things proven to be correct for mm-hmm. it. Doesn't mean there aren't a few issues, but um, you know, uh, there's a lot of evidence that backs it up. So if there is, sorry, I'm going to make a bad joke here. Um, if there are issues with the Big Bang, would you call that some kind of wrinkles in time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, some wrinkles in time there. All right. <laughs> um, but the Big Bang was not always the, um, no. uh, you know, the thought of how the universe but created. We've we really known that for less than 100 years now. Yeah. Was yeah. it in the yeah. 60s even? 
Yeah, really and truly. I mean, it was, I mean, it's born out of Einstein's equations, general theory of relativity. And um, I think it was about five years after Einstein um, came up with his equations, um, a Soviet guy, uh, Friedman, actually solved it for the universe and um, found that the universe, there is no static universe, which is what Einstein wanted, which was his lambda. Um, now, you say a static universe. And neither expanding nor, nor just nor Just existing. Yeah, just exist. Um, and Friedman found that, hey, that can't happen. Um, it's either going to expand or it's going to contract. There is no, you know, static, nothing moves. Um, and um, that was about five years, 1922-ish. And then um, a few years later, um, a Belgian, a Belgian Catholic priest, mm -hmm. um, Lemaitre, came up with um, the exact same solution. Uh, but since he was not in Soviet Russia, uh, people were like, hey, this Lemaitre guy, he solved Einstein's mm -hmm. equations for, for the universe. Mm -hmm. um, when it turned out he was about five years too late. But, uh, <laughs> you know, news didn't travel very well out of the Soviet Union yeah. at the time. But, um, interestingly enough, a lot of physicists um, did not like um, uh, Lemaitre's solution because Lemaitre was a Catholic priest. Um, they thought that his solution was just a little too religious, hmm. um, okay. which is really quite ironic, um, you know, that the that the Catholic priest comes up with the Big Bang, basically, and the physicists at the time are like, no! And nowadays, physicists are like, hey, Big Bang, and all the religious people are like, no! Didn't happen that way. God went like that. Of course. Yeah. So... Yeah, and even the Big Bang name itself was kind of made in jest, too. Um, was, was it Gamow? Gamow? Fred Hoyle. Fred Hoyle, my mistake. Um, what, was he just, like, joking about this idea? And he called it a Big Bang as, like, an offhand reference? And it kind of stuck? Yeah, he says he was not, he was not doing it in jest. But, but, you know, I mean, I think everybody thinks that he, that he was. Um, Fred Hoyle was uh, a big proponent of a competing theory, or hypothesis um, at the time, which was called the steady state universe, which um, said that basically the universe was, you know, infinite, and it is expanding, and as it expands, matter gets created, um, and, and mm -hmm. didn't get it start in this massive, fiery explosion of space-time matter and energy. Um, and um, so he... He was on a, it was either, I think it was a radio program at the time, and he was asked about it, and he called it the Big Bang. And um, thanks, Fred, because it, it stuck. Whereas yep. Big Bang, um, you know, it turned, went from hypothesis to theory, the steady state just kind of went away. Solved itself. Solved itself. <laughs> it didn't go out with a bang. No. No. No, with a whimper. But I, I, I love how the observational evidence of the Big Bang was found as well. Because uh, we had those hypotheses, those theories in the 20s, and mm -hmm. then people started to look for evidence of the Big Bang. Let me take my drink here. And, um, and it eluded physicists for a while. And then in the 60s, that's when this came about, there were two guys, Arno Penzias and uh, Robert Wilson. They were up at Bell Labs in somewhere in the Northeast area, mm -hmm. New England. And so they had this big, giant communications ante antenna for Bell Lab, and they kept seeing this persistent hum in the background of everything they were getting. And it bothered them immensely. They took out the electronic components, replaced them. Um, they taped up all the cracks in the antenna just to make sure nothing was seeping in. Uh, they went into the antenna and swept out a whole bunch of white dielectric material. That's what they called it in the paper. Uh, <laughs> so they cleaned up all the bird bur shit out of there just to try to get this noise to go away. And finally, they kind of ran out of things they could try and fix. And so they call Princeton right down the road. And they go, okay, wh wh what is this we're, we're hearing? Do you have any ideas? And actually, this team at Princeton was trying to find uh, the cosmic microwave background, the evidence of the Big Bang. And he, the professor, you know, listened in and knew immediately what, what it was. And he hung up and he said, well, boys, we've been scooped. <laughs> 
And so even though these two guys, Eleanor and uh, Robert, they didn't actually know what they found, like professors, they tried to explain it to them, and they wrote papers about you know what they found and how they found it. Um, they didn't really understand what it was until the New York Times wrote about it. Mm-hmm. And even though like they didn't quite get it, they still won the Nobel Prize in Physics just for finding it. Yeah, but Vera Rubin can't get the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Henrietta um, Levitt can't get the Nobel Prize for Cepheid Variables, but you know. We'll give it to two. Accidentally stumbling on uh, Bell Lab uh, evidence of Big Bang. No. I mean, I'm not minimizing their discovery. That that's pretty, <laughs> it is pretty damn cool. But it's just funny like they didn't know what the the depth of what they discovered. Yeah, yeah, yeah they didn't. Yeah. It, it's the afterglow of the Big Bang itself. Yeah. It is the furthest back in time that we can see with light. Which is just so crazy to think about. Mm-hmm. The furthest back in time we can see with light. Yep. Yeah, that that is the wall. We cannot go any further than and how that. far back in time is that? Three hundred and eighty thousand years after the Big Bang. Mm. Mm. After One third the Big Bang. of a million years after the Big Bang. Wow. Yep. And um, let's see. It goes by the ever um, sexy name of the. Recombination era. The recombination oh, okay. era. That's 380,000 years since the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try to take us all the way. So we kind of talked about how it was discovered, the theories. Let's go all the way back to T equals zero. Okay. So there is a singularity, a less of a dot that has everything ever. And it's not, it's not like suspending in this blackness because it is everything. I can't. But it's not has no size. It's, the dimensions are weird. The singularities are crazy things. Um, but at some point, for some reason, somehow, it begins to expand yeah. immensely fast, incredibly fast. Yeah, and we don't. Uh, so we're not saying that we know why it started to expand. Um, there are no physicists right now save maybe some string theorists in their heads as they might believe this, but no no physicist really knows why the Big Bang started. They no. just know that it did. There are some great fun theories, which I'm sure we talk about later, but... Yeah. Do you mean hypotheses? Hypotheses, yeah. yes, indeed. And so, I mean, yeah, it's infinitely small. It's dense. It's this primeval fireball. And all of the forces of nature... Are combined into one, and you know what we're used to. We we you know you throw a rock off your roof, and it falls. It falls because of gravity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you turn on a light switch. These electrons go through the circuit. That's electromagnetism. You have the weak nuclear force. So the, um, a nuclear fission with the with the weak nuclear force. Holding atoms, holding nuclei together mm-hmm. is done by the strong nuclear force. So you have these four fundamental forces, and at that moment, they were a single force. They're just one. Mm-hmm. They were one. one. Like the one ring. But not and, and everybody, the, 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 everybody. Oh, I didn't miss that. There we go. It was And that force of gravity, the strong, weak nuclear force, they had to develop in an exact way, like if gravity was a little bit uh, weaker, for example, maybe stars couldn't form, or it's too strong, maybe the universe would never expand the way it has. Uh, same thing with the strong, weak nuclear forces. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if hydrogen d- didn't collide the correct power level, we could have used up all the hydrogen much earlier in the universe. So everything fell into place exactly. Finally tuned. Finally tuned. For this universe. For this universe, and for, of course, us to exist. Um, that, there are some fun thoughts we can get into there, uh, but we just don't know any better either because it's just the way it is. So of course, it's the way it is. Yeah, and I, and I don't think I, I I think there are a lot of people who love to read into that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that it is intelligent design. The universe is fine tuned, uh, fine tunely engineered, okay. z- designed the for us, which yeah. is yeah, which is but, really but at the same time, you know if. There were, for example, multiple Big Bangs and multiple universes. Then at some point in an infinite amount, one of them's going to pop up us just fine. So that's a, one of the theories. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so t-, t minus zero begins to expand. Yeah. And so a little dash of luck sprinkled in, because really, 
The universe makes its own luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, and by the way, the, um, so physicists and, well, astronomers and astrophysicists have broken up on this timeline into eras. Mm -hmm. And now when we think of eras, we think of these really long timelines. Geological, uh, time epics, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you're going to find that for a lot of the eras in the beginning, these are very short time periods, um, exceedingly short time periods. So short, our mind cannot even begin to fathom to understand time that short. No, no. So, so let's talk about that. <laughs> so the, the second era is called the Planck time, which is um, 1 uh, times 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So that was... One million trillion trillion trillions of a, of a second. second. Yep. Whew. Yeah. So um you know that that's how I that's how I break up time. That's how I <laughs> that's how I organize my day and I, I do it in plonk times. Um <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, all right, so now at the now we can start talking about how hot is is, is the is the universe. So the universe at this point is 180 trillion trillion million degrees. 180 million trillion trillion degrees. Okay. That is insane. That's that is 1.8 times 10 to the 32. It's warm. Just okay. a tad, yeah. Okay. I mean, at that temperature, like, I don't think it means anything. <laughs> I mean, of course, it means lots yeah. of things, no. but it, it's, it means a lot to the no, universe. There's yeah. no reference point for no. us yeah. to understand what it means, you know. It's, it's, just, just, the, just, it's just like, ah, oh, it's hot. Just a balmy billion degrees. And like living in Phoenix during the summertime. Hey. hey. Um, yeah, so this is the closest that, um, that physics, as we currently understand it, can get to the Big Bang. As we currently understand it. Yes, yeah, this is this is the barrier, based on what we know and understand about the universe. Now, right? and there's, I mean, sure, I mean, but underneath a second, it's still a little bit iffy, but but we definitely can go no further than this. Okay. I was going to ask why. What? Yeah. What, what? Do we need new physics to understand further yes, back? Yes, you need fancy because physics. in the beginning. Fancy in the beginning, um, gravity was married to the, the other forces, mm -hmm. electromagnetism, strong and weak forces. Um, our equations right now can marry three of them. It can marry electromagnetism, oh, right. can marry the weak force together with the okay. strong force. But we can't, and this has been the holy grail really for 100 years. Einstein tried to do it, and it never worked. And the string theorists are now... Probably, let's just be honest, the closest to being able to do this. Um, it's called quantum gravity, and um, and it will be a quote unquote equation. It's going to be multiple equations, but it's going to be an equation that. How many numbers will be in this equation, or is it all and 42 lines? equation units? And I numbers. Know. <laughs> I know they're having a difficult time figuring this out, but have they tried carrying the two? Because that, that, that sometimes got me. <laughs> so I could see how that could strip up some scientists. I don't think so. I th okay. You know what? I'll call Brian Gary up. <laughs> Say, hey, dude, you know, maybe if you do this. All right, so we're, we're still at one million trillion trillion trillions of a second. Yeah, and if we, um, if we go forward a little bit in time, we have um, what's called the Grand Unification Era, which is from uh, 10 to the minus 43 seconds to 10 to the minus 36 seconds. Um, the universe, by the way, is 1,800 trillion trillion degrees at this point. Okay. And um, this is when the force of gravity separates. It separates from the other forces. Um, so this is the first... Go your own way. <laughs> Go your own way. That's what gravity was doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the, uh, yeah, the first separation uh, of the forces um, mm -hmm. to occur. So gravity was the first to do it. And then after that, we have a pretty interesting thing. We don't... Oh, this is the interesting thing. Okay. This, just this one. Yeah, like, I mean, all oh, this is really cool <laughs> shit, but... Something more interesting happens? 
Well, this is something that, like, um, we truly, um, and I, I say this as if I'm involved in this conversation. Um, astrophysicists don't understand what caused it. They just have a really good that. idea that that it happened. Love that. Kind of like the Big Bang itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is when um, you have um, I- inflation. This is the inflation era, um, and it happens within um, 10 to the minus 36 or 10 minus 32 seconds. This is this these seconds are almost kind of meaningless wow. at this point. I mean, this is yeah. all of this is happening just yeah, just like, like that. Video. I have like, so many questions that physics can't answer. Faster than I, it takes me to snap my fingers. You can do yeah. This happens a trillion trillion times in the snap of a finger. <laughs> yeah, and um, basically the strong force now separates um, from the other forces, and um, the the universe undergoes this really rapid. Um, expansion and um, and it expands um, the linear dimensions um, increase in a small fraction of a second by a factor of about 10 to the 26 it's a big ass fucking number yeah um, the universe goes from basically minus uh, 10 to the minus 35 meters so really really infinitesimal to four inches oh yeah. Wow. So I guess the Size universe of was a. That's, Size of a so, that's so the cool. universe was really a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. <laughs> at, at, at 10 to the minus 32 it's just like, seconds. It's just like, boop. Yep. But it has major implications. Absolutely. Major implications for the, for the universe. Basically, um, when, when you look at the cosmic background radiation, you're looking at the effect. Of the inflation yeah. era. Wow. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's it's an amazing thing. So um, the universe is a hot, dense quark gluon plasma. Wait, 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 wait. wait. S- say that again, but in like a physics voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is the what physics, is a physics I, voice? I don't, I don't know. But put your glasses <laughs> put your glasses on and. Do the whole thing, but then I can't read it. Oh, well, <laughs> that's well, then re- re- look at it and then take your glasses off slowly. Is a muon gluon soup the universe a dense quark gluon soup of the universe? Ah, huh? uh, no, all right, since children. Right? Next yeah. time, you gotta look at the camera when you do it. I'm looking at it, okay. I, 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 like it. To, <laughs> I, I liked it when he looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it becomes uh, distributed thinly across the universe. In a universe that is only the size of a fucking grapefruit. But there's no context for size. So at that point, it's still technically, I guess, infinitely small and large still. Which is yeah. weird. Yeah. Because it, it's not expanding into anything. It's just expanding. Yeah. And so it's trading space as it goes. There's nothing. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a black void or a white void. It's nothing. Which blows my mind. Show mom asked. Uh, is there no matter? So maybe. Nope. There's really no matter at this point. Nothing matters at this point, Mom. It's too hot. It's too hot. It's, it's all damn. energy. It's all energy at this point. So. Oh, pretty much is all energy. It's all caffeine. <laughs> so shortly after this expansion, um, the electro weak era shows up, and um, um, so strong nuclear force basically separates out, as I mentioned, but. Uh, particle interactions create large numbers of exotic particles. So now we're getting some particles. Okay. So what's what's that mean? What's exotic particles? Particles yeah. are. It is matter at this point. Um, okay. And you get these things called W and Z bosons, mm-hmm. which are uh, they're they're weak nuclear force carriers. Um, bosons. Right. You can create. We're like bozos, am I right? That's all I'm here for, everybody. <laughs> um, the had large hadron collider can create them. Um, you need you need high energy accelerators to create these particles. Um, also, the Higgs boson was created, and the Higgs field is basically it slows these particles down, mm-hmm. prevents them from going to speed of light, and gives them mass. So all of my mass, fuck you, Higgs field. It's your fault. It has it. nothing to do with me eating all this food. <laughs> Damn it, Higgs. Fucking Higgs. Slowing me down. 
So we're still not at a second, though. No. <laughs> we, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> How close to a second are we? Far, far. All right, well, here in the far, quark, far quark era, when quarks are being made, we're, we're still at... 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So we're getting close. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, okay. We're getting to uh, yeah. times I can imagine now. But so, at the same time, there is not, no time at that no, point. There's no time. Well, no, Wait. there is time. Okay. Yeah. 10 to the minus 6 seconds. There is time. Okay. Um, it's just it's, it's a small time. kind of me- it's very small time. It's small time. Kind of meaningless to us. But uh, but we're getting there. The universe has cooled down to 180 trillion degrees at this point. Oh, okay. So we we That's went from a temperate from a <laughs> from a balmy 180 million trillion trillion degrees all the way down so to um, 180 trillion degrees. It's frigid. It's sweater weather. Yeah. It is yeah. Frigid. It's really chilly. Grab your puppy and cuddle because it's cold. <laughs> so quarks are forming. Quarks are what? All right. So you have protons in the nuclei of atoms mm-hmm. and, and neutrons as well. Um, Inside of those protons and neutrons, you have these little particles called quarks. And what I love about quarks is that they weren't named necessarily by a scientist or a physicist thinking of a great name. It comes from a James Joyce book, um, Finnegan's Wake. Oh! (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I think they're in the pub doing a song, and quarks are mentioned, and so so the the scientists went back. Do you know the names? What's that? Do you know the names? I don't. Uh Oh. Down, oh, up down quarks, yeah. Bottom, top, charm and strange. Charm and strange, that's right. So the best store oh of strange God. ever. Yeah. And so the, the quarks that are inside protons and neutrons, basically everything that we interact with are up, up and down quarks. Up and down. Up and down. <laughs> up and down quarks. Up and down. That's pretty quirky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, thanks, James Joyce, for the one good thing you did. All right, so... But, I'm sorry, hold on. Nobody's going to make a Star Trek reference? Quark? It's a quark, yeah. I thought about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can't drink of it. I know, I'm going but... to. All right, well, at one second, we're finally at one second. One second to three we minutes. made it. One second into the universe. This is called the Lepton Era, and this is when you have... Um, uh, basically, prior to the lepton era, you, you created all these um, things called hadrons, basically anything that has, you know, quarks in it. And um, there were hadrons and antihadrons. Most of them annihilated each other. Uh, but for some reason, don't know why, but for some reason, there was just a slight more hadrons. And that's a good thing because it allows us to be here Yay. and have this podcast. Um, I just I just realized um, something stupid in my head. Um, I just thought the Large Hadron Collider was called the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> I, didn't, some dude. I didn't know what hadrons were a thing, yeah. <laughs> or that I guess that's what they're colliding sometimes. But okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have learned something. All right, so then uh, leptons, uh, leptons form. Uh, leptons, leptons are things like electrons, mm-hmm. and um, it's uh, anti-electron, which is also called a positron. Um, they also did this little bit of a little annihilation dance, mm-hmm. and like with the hadrons, there was a slight more electrons than positrons, and so I, 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 again, a good thing. Uh, what? I have questions about. Dark matter, but I'll save that for the hangover. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I'm getting to all the extra weird shit in the hangover. After that, um, from three minutes to 20 minutes, uh, this is called the nucleosynth- nucleosynthesis era. And this is when the temperature basically falls to a point uh, where atomic nuclei can begin to form. Mm-hmm. And you, you kind of skipped over something important in my mind. You said three minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, within those first three minutes, 98% of all the elements were made. Yeah. So, in the time it makes to, oh, in the time it yeah. takes to make a sandwich, hydrogen, 98% of everything was made. And some lithium. And, and a little, again, a little dash of lithium. A little yeah. dash. A little yeah. sprinkling yeah. of lithium so, in there. A little sprinkling of So, the there. Big Bang Theory says that you should have um, a certain amount of hydrogen mm-hmm. that's created in the Big Bang, that you should have a certain amount of helium. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, you should have a certain amount of deuterium, which is 
Uh, heavy hydrogen. hydrogen. Yep. Oh, I knew that one. Hey, look at that. So when we think of hydrogen, you think of a single proton and an electron going around it. With deuterium, it is a proton and a neutron um, mm -hmm. inside the nucleus. Okay. Um, and that's what makes it heavy. But it still only has one proton, so it's called hydrogen. Um, you have a certain amount of helium that's created and a very small amount of lithium uh, that is created. Yay, Nirvana. I, know, I was thinking I was, the I same was thing. Singing, I was like, oh, I'm going to make a Nirvana reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, really, okay, so I had, I had the honor of working on a project at the um, Indiana University Cyclotron Facility. And um, we actually did not use the cyclotron at all because oh. we were working on neutrons and neutrons are not affected by magnetic fields because they are neutral. Um, and basically we wanted to find out how long it takes for um, a free neutron, just kind of floating out in space, mm -hmm. hanging out by itself, how long for it to decay, uh, break apart mm -hmm. into um, a proton, an electron, and a neutrino. Um, and so, um, because that has definite implications for this nucleosynthesis era. Because you need those neutrons to combine to create things like lithium. Mm -hmm. And um, once those free neutrons go away, your, your nucleosynthesis era ends in the Big Bang. So 20 minutes puts a cap wow. at that. Um, at that. Um, so um, three minutes to um, 240,000 years oh. after the uh, Big Bang. Now, now, oh, now really, really, really quick, um, the last size reference we got was four inches. So where are we at at three oh, minutes? Yeah. Let's get some size going on here, because this is cool. Much bigger. Much bigger. I couldn't find any references to the size. Oh. Yeah, I um, wanted to. Damn, I read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, I, I think it was like a million billion miles within a couple minutes. Because it kept doubling in size every very quick um, so in a few minutes, it was already incredibly huge. So what's the what's the cosmic speed limit for things like me and you in spacecraft? For us, we got, we got the speed of light. Speed of light. Mm -hmm. The universe is going faster than the speed of light. It's expanding because it's it's not necessarily moving. It's just the space between. It's expanding. It's weird. Yeah. So yeah, the the universe's expansion is not governed by that universal speed limit. If Fuck. You, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so basically uh, the photon era is, uh, so the universe is starting to cool, um, and um, it's basically filled with, you know, a plasma, hot atomic nuclei, electrons, and photons that are kind of bouncing Federable cosmic soup. Yeah, I was thinking, yes. I was thinking soupy. But something something happens about oh. 380,000 years <gasps> after the Big Bang. What happened? What happened? This is where the universe cools down to about 3,000 degrees. Well, that's reasonable. Oh, that's your thing. I can imagine that. that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking hot, but it's. I mean, it was Phoenix during the summertime, right? Um, second, okay, second, all right, I'm sorry. Second, it's 3,000 degrees Kelvin. It's 4,940 oh. <laughs> degrees oh, Fahrenheit. Oh, oh. That's, but still, but that's still, yeah, I mean, the surface 5, of the sun degrees. is only 10,000 degrees, yeah. so, you know, that's fine. So yeah. not, not even as Nothing. hot as the surface of the sun, but this is when you can have um, atoms form. Yes. It's cool enough oh. to where electrons be, can be captured by the, uh, the, the nuclei mm -hmm. of an atom. And at this point, light and matter separate. Light goes its own way. It doesn't necessarily get caught up by an atom. And at that moment, becomes a cosmic background radiation. Yes, the universe is 4,940 degrees at this point. But as it expands, it cools. That The wavelength of that light gets redshifted out. And now we see it as a cosmic background radiation. So there wasn't, really, there wasn't any light before that. Then, there it was, was. Married. it was married to... No, 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 it was. What it was doing is bouncing 
off of uh, electrons and, and, and protons. Basically, it's just really big, confusing okay, okay, um, okay. game of pool where all these balls yeah. are flying all over the place and for protons the are all... pinball analogy. Yeah, so they're slamming okay. into each other, they're bouncing off of each other. Um, but as soon as soon as a photon hits in a, uh, a proton, it imparts some of that energy to that proton. The proton goes flying off in one direction. Maybe it hits an electron and it goes flying off in another direction. But now, when the universe cools down to about 5,000 degrees, mm -hmm. these photons or light can now head out into the universe unencumbered until some dumb people, 13.8 billion years later, builds a little space uh, spacecraft or uses this antenna on the East Coast and like, hey, we're seeing this shit. That light has been going for 13 point, you know, 8 billion years. And you can see and hear that yourself. Yes. Um, yes. Of, of course, we don't well, have this ability anymore because no. we don't have bunny ears on the uh, TVs. Oh, but yeah. if you do have that, you know, tune to any channel where it's just static. And 1% of that static will be that leftover light from the Big Bang. Yeah. And then also, is it um, is. F, F, AM, AM radio? You can do this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so go to AM radio and just tune to any station because nothing's on AM anymore. And you're going to hear that, that static buzz. Worth listening to. Yeah, right. You're going to hear that static buzz. Again, 1%, the Big Bang. Oh. Yeah, which that's where you're going to have to go listen to it now. But yeah. um, so you can never be bored with the radio when you listen to the birth of the universe. I mean, but imagine that though. That is really cool as fuck. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, you, I, as a kid, my you know my parents had the big box set of a TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would have that static on it. Mm -hmm. And it, as a time, I didn't know that was no, the Big Bang. You were experiencing the Big Bang. I was experiencing the Big Bang. Um, and it really. It connects you to the beginning of the universe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or at least almost the beginning of the universe, right? But yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. you you become connected um, to the beginning of the universe, and then you know, was it um, Poltergeist kind of that... scared the shit out of everybody with uh, static for a bit, but uh... and then Poltergeist too, they're back. <laughs> I never saw it. Oh, never saw it. All right, well we're gonna have to watch it. Okay, got added to the list. <laughs> Alright, so then now we started getting into, you know, longer time periods. So this to me is really kind of, because I just never thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. called the Dark Era um, of, of the universe. It goes from about 380,000 years to 150 million years. It doesn't mean that there's no light. Light is there. It's flying throughout the universe. It's just that no stars have been formed yet. Mm. And so, um, it's this hazy um, universe filled with hydrogen and helium, a little bit of lithium, light going everywhere, but it's dark. So what's stopping the hydrogen atoms to coalescing and becoming a star? Well, you need a little bit of gravity. Ah, mm -hmm. gravity. And so this is, and you can see this in the cosmic background radiation. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the cosmic background radiation, um, you will see uh, this nice map of blues and reds, basically. I love that map. Yeah, I oh, love yes. that yes. map. Um, and the reds are a little bit warmer. The blues are where the universe is just a little bit colder. Mm -hmm. The difference in temperature is really quite small, but it's just enough. It's Big implications um, because in those redder, warmer areas, mm -hmm. that's where you have a little bit more matter, mm -hmm. and so it's a little bit denser. Mm -hmm. And if it's denser, it means you have more gravity, and it's able to attract. And since you have more gravity, you can attract more material. And over time, you know, as more material falls in, you get bigger. You get more gravity. And you're able to attract even more gas. Yes. Eventually you get to a point where this big ball of hydrogen, uh, well, this time hydrogen with a little bit of helium in it, get the, the center of it gets so hot, hot enough to where you can slam hydrogen together, four of them, and it, and it creates helium. And at that moment, the nuclear fusion 
furnace turns on, mm. and that big ball of gas now becomes what we call a star. And the universe lights up. That's the, a that's a let there be light moment the right first there. First generation of stars. Yeah. Ain't that or something? Or population three. Population three stars. Population three stars. And then you have It gets even better. And then yeah, you can you imagine? I you know, we we talked about superpowers the other day. And you talked about time travel. I you being Liz. Liz talked about wanting her uh time uh superpower to be time travel. I can get behind that, and I would want to go back and see the first star turning on. You, you died pretty quick. Oh, no, but your you, your superpower no, okay. is that you're protected. You can go back. Got to it. So it's like dual cool superpowers. Yeah, right, you're right. basically Deadpool. I mean, everywhere you go, you go time traveling in the past, you would die of something real fast. So you're protected. Yeah, but I mean, can you imagine? That'd be neat. Not the that universe neat. had a first star. It had a first star. And I would love. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I would thought love of that. to go back in time and see that first star. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You might have had all these stars that turned on kind of pretty much right about the same time, but, but there was one won. that did it first. It's still one. There was one that did it first, and I mean, think about that. The universe is dark, and then all of a sudden, it lights up. Now, at that same point, there will be a last star someday as well. Yeah. Yeah, we should get to that later on. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there in the 16 yeah. hours, because we're, we're getting through those seconds, folks. Yeah, um, well, now we're, a couple of thousand, we're thousand basically million, 500 yeah. million years and onward. Those stars, um, all these stars get formed. They turn into, they collectively become galaxies. Mm. Um, and, then, um, and then there's this galaxy that formed. Um, 500 million years after the Big Bang. Now, now, now Mike. Uh, the universe is expanding, and we're coalescing into stars and galaxies. So why is the space between the stars expanding faster than galaxies can form? If it was expanding faster than light. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have stars forming, of course, and then as the stars form, they get more mass and they coalesce into galaxies. Now space is expanding. Space mm -hmm. between galaxies is expanding extraordinarily fast. So why is the space between... The stars within the galaxy are not also expanding and ripping galaxies apart. Oh, oh, I, I got you. Um, that, that's, well, you have gravity and you have yeah, matter. You have gravity. Gravity. You have matter that's holding yeah. everything yeah. kind of together. So yeah, and so when uh, yeah, so when the universe is created, mm -hmm. it's not just you know protons and electrons and all that kind of stuff. Um, other stuff is created like dark matter and dark energy. Dark energy, really not an influence at this point in the game at all. Um, dark matter is, however, and dark matter is really kind of the glue that's kind of keeping it um, all together. Um, but also, the thing is, is that, yes, space is expanding, and um, it's expanding right now. Why aren't we being ripped apart? Because right now, here, right where I'm sitting... Space is not expanding really all that fast relative to me, but on the far reaches of the universe, though, it really is kicking way on there. Okay. Um, and so that expansion is not ripping apart my, my atoms. And yeah, so these galaxies form, and in one particular galaxy um, that formed, you know, 500 million years after the Big Bang. Mm. Nine billion years after the Big Bang, a star formed in it. Is this a particular galaxy? Let him do his thing. Let him do his thing. Well, we did talk about it last week. <laughs> what was it? The Milky Way. Oh, yeah, that's what. Where, when does the milk come in? <laughs> that's when Athena is ready to go. <laughs> Hera, sorry. Hera. Hera, Hera. Hera. <laughs> what did you, what did, how did you describe it? Her, her teat? Her the teat. teat. Yes. Her teat. Um, <laughs> teat milk. Yeah, so, and then around this just average star, yellow star, our, a planet formed. Actually, a whole bunch uh, of them formed. Eight of them formed. Well, actually, well, more at the time. Well, actually, Liz, <laughs> more at the time. Yes. Because we had to yes. figure out what happened when worlds collide. Oh, yeah. And eventually, a group of primates arose on that planet and figured out a way they, to was, understand the they universe. They encountered an obelisk 
And then... <laughs> yeah, but you know, you and I were talking about this uh, this morning, and in, Brandon and I were talking about this morning, but Liz and I have talked about this before. I just think it is the most amazing thing that our brains are able to figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. That we are able to go back in time. Mm. That we're able to time travel pretty much all the way, almost to the Big Bang itself. Not quite there, but we are one, I mean, what did you say? It was a million, a million trillion, 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 trillion of a second away from the beginning of the universe. That we're able to abstractly understand that. Yeah. I, I look at Leia, who, who so desperately wants to come in this room and hang Le- out with Leia's a dog. <laughs> yes. Um, and all she worries about is the food that she gets and what pets. love she's getting. The pets, yes. And that type of thing. But we're we're able to figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. We're able to mm-hmm. figure out a way to see light shortly after the Big Bang. And and that's all we have to go off of studying. It's just light. It's not like there's a research paper written. 16 billion years ago. No, it's yeah. just light we are studying. That's also mind blowing. Yeah, so, um, sure. I think humanity needs to really gravitate. Um, I know, right? Uh, so I did there. Gravitate to the idea that we're able to understand these things mm-hmm. and stop trying to figure out ways of fucking killing each other and ways of being a fucking racist to somebody else or just a fucking bigot or just a fucking asshole. You know, we're able to figure out the universe. We're able to understand the universe. Why don't we concentrate on that instead of who cares what two people are doing in the bedroom? Who cares what color somebody is? We all came with the same singularity, folks. We did. Well, for how smart we are, we just make uh, equally stupid decisions. <laughs> That's true. So, um, yeah, the Big Bang, fucking awesome. Well, do we have um, any wrapped up? I mean, that pretty summed up, that summed up pretty well right there. My thoughts on the Big Bang. Yeah. Well, um, but wait, did we ever actually answer how much bang is in the Big Bang? A lot. A lot. There of were bang. forty-two bang units. Everything. Everything that's ever banged was in the Big Bang. That is true. That is true. <laughs> Everything that ever has or ever will bang. This isn't it more just like a, it's a, a big expansion. Anyway. What? It's a big expansion. It is a big expansion. Uh, do you have any uh, last thoughts here, Liz? I don't. I don't. I think that that sums up. Yeah. it's. it's I, I love the Big Bang. The Big it Bang. It blows my mind. It really does. It really I, does. I, I still love trying to think about the singularity because it's it's space itself it's not in anything it just exists it's not expanding into anywhere or any time it's creating as it goes and my mind stops working yeah it's not it's incomprehensible so yeah. yes so far so yet yes all but right still all right let's, let's get to the hangover yeah, let's do the hangover thanks for joining us folks um, we'll see you again in two weeks for the podcast or the hangover. Oh, in like you, know five minutes. you know what we're doing? You know what we're doing in two weeks? Tell them what we're doing in two weeks. Yeah, Liz, tell them what we're doing in two we weeks. We are giving you, our listeners, oh, a planetarium show. Planetarium show. What, what, tipsy stars. Tipsy, tipsy stars. stars. Tipsy stars. Tipsy stars. stars with Cosmos of Cosmos. Yep. Yeah. So join us for that, um, for that planetarium show. We'll show you what's up in the night sky. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right. But All right. for now, thanks for joining Till then. us. Uh, follow us on all the things, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe, everyone. Cheers.